Time now for the morning rush. And we start with meteorologist Chris Gilson. The next big weather maker is going to be the wind today. The wind's already picking up out of the south, and we're going to see those winds gusting up to 50 miles per hour later on this afternoon. Chris, thanks. As you get ready to head out the door, we're following today's top local stories. We'll start with Catherine Mazone. New this morning, the Santa Fe School District fires back at the PED over claims it broke the law. It comes after the district dismissed schools early for a public rally earlier this month. The PED says the school broke the law by using school resources for the pro-education protest. But this letter responds to each of the department's concerns. The district claims all of its actions are protected under the U.S. Constitution and the state constitution and says no public funds were used illegally or improperly. Who else the district hopes to reach with its message coming up in the five facts? Adam? Happening today, President Trump's expected to sign two new executive orders. The first will launch a wide-ranging review of the U.S. trade deficit with the purpose of identifying forms of trade abuse contributing to the deficit. The other seeks to strengthen anti-dumping rules and enforcement, which helps protect U.S. companies from foreign manufacturers selling goods at an unfair price. This morning, the governor of Georgia has issued a state of emergency for Atlanta's Fulton County after a massive fire and highway collapse during rush hour yesterday afternoon. The fire sparked during rush hour. Police frantically worked to stop traffic. Now investigators are looking into whether reels of fiber cable underneath the freeway fueled the flames. New this morning, Internet users are fighting back against Congress after Republicans voted to block Obama-era privacy rules that prevented Internet providers from selling users' browsing info without permission. Two fundraising campaigns have already raised more than $200,000 to buy lawmakers' browsing histories and make them public. Developing now, the NCAA says it will review North Carolina's rollback of its bathroom bill before making any decisions about bringing sporting events back to the state. The collegiate sports governing body pulled neutral site championships for this year and threatened to boycott the state as long as House Bill 2 was on the books. Lawmakers repealed the legislation on Thursday. Happening today, two of three suspected killers connected with the death of two men are expected in court later this morning. APD tells us that Eder Ortiz Pata, Edwin Edsel Ortiz Pata, and Rafael Gonzalez Pata are charged in the killings that happened back in August. Right now, their arrest warrants remain sealed. Later this morning, Edwin Edsel Ortiz Pata and Rafael Gonzalez Pata are due for an arraignment. On to new details now. Later this year, the man accused of killing a Hatch police officer is expected to go to trial after turning down a plea deal. He says he didn't do it. Police say Jesse Haynes killed officer Jose Chavez during a traffic stop last year. Prosecutors in Doniana County are seeking life in prison without the chance of parole since New Mexico no longer has a death penalty. This week, Coca-Cola made an unexpected switch with its machines at Santa Fe City Hall, swapping normal soda with diet drinks. This comes after the city council voted to put the soda tax on the upcoming ballot. It would impose a tax of two cents per ounce on soda and other sugary drinks. That's 24 cents more for one can of soda. Coca-Cola says the decision to switch to diet was made by the company. New this morning, SpaceX is preparing for its next goal after reaching a milestone yesterday. It marked the first time in the history of space flight that the same rocket has been used on two separate missions to orbit. SpaceX launched the rocket carrying a satellite at the Kennedy Space Center. CEO Elon Musk announced his next goal to launch a rocket twice in 24 hours. Sarah. In just hours, a local third grader behind a charity box that's helping classmates will be recognized by Mayor Richard Berry. Gavin Gallegos, a student at McCollum Elementary, built the supply box. Items like hygiene products and food are inside and are free to fellow classmates in need. Recently, his sister's softball team made a large donation as part of a community service deed. Mayor Berry will recognize Gavin as a good Samaritan this morning at 11. Chris? We're at a metro threat index today at an 8 because the winds are going to be picking up, gusting close to 45 miles per hour, plus colder air moving in as we head into the weekend. Facebook is getting into the fundraising game, letting users raise money for themselves or a charity, kind of like GoFundMe page. Facebook will take a cut, though. There is a nearly 7% transaction fee plus 30 cents per donation. Facebook says it's to cover security and fraud protection. Chris. <laughs> Taking a look at traffic this morning, we do have some slowdowns from Jefferson to Montgomery. Also slows, slowdowns at the Coors Interchange along I-40. Adam? Opening today, London's Saatchi Gallery launches its newest exhibit from selfie to self-expression. This is a look at the history of selfies. It kicks off with Rembrandt, the 17th century Dutch artist. His paintings are represented on digital screens that uh, one can actually like. The exhibition that runs until May includes selfies by celebrities, including David Beckham and reality TV star Kim Kardashian, of course. 
<laughs> many more as well. <laughs> Kim Kardashian, of course. <laughs> the queen of selfies, right? right? Okay, bust out those sparkly dresses and tuxedos because today is National Prom Day. While the annual big dance usually brings up images of fashion and friends, National Prom Day also wants partygoers to be responsible for celebrating. The day is also a reminder to think back on your favorite prom memories. Do you guys uh, have any favorite prom memories? So many. Yeah. So many, yeah. <laughs> no. Dancing, <laughs> dancing, and more dancing, right? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for the five facts this morning. We start with number five. So many, he can't even think of them right now. <laughs> Happening today, it's National Crayon Day. Crayola says it will ditch the color dandelion from its classic 24 count crayon box. It's going to be replaced with another color later on today. The company will announce dandelion's replacement um, again later on today. We'll let you know what happens. And number four this morning, a New Mexico priest is under fire after some parishioners say he made controversial remarks in front of children at Our Lady of Belize. In. Paulette Tafoya claims that Father Jonas Romea told the kids to not listen to liberals and then said that Muslims would do harm to them. After receiving complaints, the Archdiocese sent a letter to parents saying the priest's homily did not fully embrace the message of Jesus, Jesus Christ. At number three, we're in for more wind today. Temperatures are not going to move all that much from where they are right now. Back into the upper 50s, lower 60s. A bit cooler for Saturday with a chance for some showers tomorrow afternoon. At number two today, President Trump's former national security advisor Michael Flynn could continue negotiation talks with Congress. This after he reportedly is offering to testify before the FBI and others about the Trump campaign's potential ties with Russia. But what's raising eyebrows is his attorney says he's willing to do that if granted immunity from possible prosecution. Just hours ago, President Trump tweeted a response saying Flynn should ask for immunity, calling the investigation a, quote, witch hunt by media and Dems of historic proportion. And that's the first time we've heard from the president on this matter. Okay, on to number one now. Santa Fe Public Schools responding to the state's claims it broke the law when dismissing schools early for a public rally earlier this month. The PED says the school used school resources for the pro-education protest. The superintendent fired back, though, saying what the district did is protected by the U.S. Constitution. The school board voted unanimously to approve the letter and send it to the PED. New this morning, they're also sending that same letter to other state officials that does include the auditor and the attorney general. For more details on this story, head on over to our website. That's krqb.com.